I love terraforming Mars. Put another algae in the ecosystem. Oh, another beautiful day on the big old dusty uh, peach. Chris, why aren't you wearing a space mask? We're in space! Dude, did you not hear? We just invented trees. Ah, oh, great! Also, technically we're on Mars, which isn't in space. I it's love trees. Got an atmosphere. Oh, hey, I just came to tell you that we're doing some major work in this area, so we should probably get out of here around about uh, now. Oh, hey kids. Hey kids. Which, this is board the... game... Which board game are we today? It's what the kids are talking about. Which kids? It's Terraforming Mars. A 2016 management game so popular, they've already announced four expansions, including Terraforming Mars Venus Next, which is a title that I don't think has fully grasped what colons are for. What can you say, Quins? Where we're going, we don't need colons. This game is literally worlds apart from other management type games in the fact that it's sexier and it's exciting. You're crashing asteroids into the planet. You are creating volcanoes and algae. Al algae? Algae! Quins, where have you been? The kids are loving algae. It's all about algae. Get your face flaps around this one. Chin chin. Mine's a lumpy one. That could have been a lot worse. <laughs> oh no, it's pretty bad. It's pretty <laughs> bad. <laughs> so Terraforming Mars is a competitive game for between two and five players about who can terraform Mars the most. You got your Mars and you've got your Mars bars, showing that Mars is freezing cold, has 0% oxygen and none of the water that you need to survive here. Now, whenever anyone terraforms Mars, they increase up this terraforming track and the game ends when Mars is suitably warm, wet and wild, at which point whoever has the most terraforming points is the winner. There's just one problem. Breeding ants or crashing asteroids into the planet to heat things up like a galactic jacuzzi isn't just awesome, it's really expensive. So realistically, it's the richest of you that will terraform Mars the most, which means you might have to get involved in strip mining, putting a security fleet in orbit, or flying people to Mars for the privilege of working for you for life. Oh no guys, turns out humans are bad. In fact, barely any of your attention is even going to be on this central map. Instead, players are going to be staring straight down at their personal corporate place setting. What's for dinner, mum? Cubes! Every turn begins with everyone getting a fat stack of euros and drawing four projects that you might choose to buy. Like maybe you get dealt Mars University and some fungus and harvest lightning and some moss. Every card you want the option of building later is going to cost you three euros, meaning you have to decide between euros you need now and projects you might desperately need later because everything else gets discarded. And there's a whole massive, epic stack of a deck of programs to choose from and things that you can do, and it's all grounded in actual real life science. Probably, definitely, almost probably. And it's got, you know, real life algae. Lots of versions of real life algae. Real algae in your local area now. Real algae wants to chat. Real algae, call now. Real algae, so lonely. When did you get so weird about algae? I don't know, I'll stop once I've got, once I've had my chlorophyll of it. You're fired. That's reasonable. The rest of a round is then spent as players take turns to wring everything they can, every last resource, out of their place setting like blood from a stone. Or if you prefer, moss from a Mars. You see, you've got euros, steel, titanium, plants, electricity and heat. These represent the amount you've got of each, but these represent the production you have of each. So if I build a power plant for four euros, I don't just get more electricity, I get more electricity every turn for the rest of the game until I spend it by building something that increases electricity. And in fact, since your victory points are also the money you make, it's difficult to do anything in terraforming Mars that doesn't explode like a firework display of more cubes and cubes going up and other cubes going down and more cubes going up and suddenly, the appeal of terraforming Mars is as crystal clear as if you were gazing through a web 
of transparent moss. You see, this is a game about starting with nothing if you play the extended version in the back of the manual, which we absolutely recommend you do, having this silent sheet and then gradually inserting cool projects that you've picked into the company one after another, like long thin coins into a corporate jukebox, gradually building up income and discounts and prospects and possibilities, searching for synergies. And then just as you've spent the last of your money building an extreme sports resort, which permanently increases your income for the rest of the game, and crashing a moon into the planet, which gives you a crap ton of metal, suddenly you get four more projects you might want with 30 more mega euros and what are they gonna be? And it's kind of easy to forget that you're here to make Mars livable. But that's forgivable because yes, you're on the hot orange, the dusty boy, the solar satsuma, the last tamale, the planet Mars. And yet the game is only ever almost, in turning small numbers into bigger numbers. So a lot of the time it doesn't feel like you're on Mars, so let's talk about theme, let's talk about what you're doing. Let's ask the same question that David Bowie asked in his song, is Mars a lively place? To which the answer is yes, providing you're really into science, algae, bacteria, other kinds of algae. If you're not into science, then it's Mars is a Euro game, which means it's largely unable to support vibrant life. Euro games are things where you will end up prodding away at your own systems and interacting not very much, and at the end you'll tot up your scores, announcing who won, singing the national anthem. God save our lovely queen. Sharing your family's quota of soup for the week, and then going straight to bed. And that's not to say we don't love a good Euro game, it's just they're not exactly the life of the party, as seen here on the party scale, uh, where we have the Euro games just below here, uh, just below cheese and pineapple on sticks. But that's fine, because, you know, I love small amounts of food on sticks, and if you love science, then this is a Euro game with a theme that you will find exciting. That never happens. I know it never happens, but this is a, a, finally something for people who like science or believe in science. I think it's nonsense. Every round of the game is a whole generation, which means after three or four turns, everybody you know is dead. But don't be sad, because you've, you've got bushes. You've brought actual bushes to another planet. Real greenery. Bushes on Mars. And throughout the game, over a period of two hours, you'll have a frozen lake there and a, a little belch of oxygen here, and you'll have turned this hellscape into, well, maybe not a nice place, but a place where you can flounce around in low gravity with your sexuality and bone density much reduced while you gasp for oxygen. But you're in a bush. You've made bushes. So, where are we at? Well, it's a satisfying game with an interesting, evocative theme. But... But... What separates a good Euro game from a great Euro game in the minds of our minds is that mechanics allow players to stop focusing on the machinations just in front of them on their sheets and to look up and to interact, not necessarily interfere, but to interact with the other people around the table, bringing to life the most expensive component of any board game, the human beings. Well said. Now, in Terraforming Mars, obviously, we have... Mars, the hot tamale that I'm just gonna... Yeah, so you've got lakes that you can put down and you've got cities and you've got gardens and you're all competing for space. But in practice, this is kind of where terraforming Mars sharpness and speed stops. This game is fiddly and it's not enormously rewarding. It's also not very impactful. It's, uh, it's literally a big shame. A massive ball of shame. And the thing is though, what brings this game to life, where it shines, is the same thing is what makes it interesting for the players, the cards. And it means that like when other people are taking their goes, you end up like stopping and looking at what they're doing. Not because you're trying to get a strategic advantage of any kind, just because it's cool. Matthew, this turn I am bribing a committee and I'm building a Martian railway network. It's like in the United Kingdom. It's like basically Southern Rail. It's... I'm genuinely sad.
Much like Shut Up and Sit Down favourite Race for the Galaxy, much of the thrill here is just in seeing the cards you play slowly paint a story. Maybe it's a heartwarming story of humanity's fresh start, or maybe it's a grim one. Earth making the same mistakes all over again. When will we learn? Or maybe it's not, maybe it's just funny. Maybe you're an eco-friendly tech startup that builds an actual volcano, followed by a designated nuclear blast zone? This humour is tempered by delightfully shonky card art, but mostly it's just the juxtaposition of the utterly mundane with the genuinely extreme. You'll move mountains and shift rivers and create oceans, but also you'll need algae and pets. Because what's the point in changing things? What's the point in genesis of life? If you can't always ha also have a, a lovely little cute dog. After all, it wouldn't be the same without them, even if their bone density can't handle it. But while you'll find stuff to like in this fluffy Martian atmosphere, it doesn't change the fact that most of your time will be spent in the crunchy Martian soil of cubes and numbers. Now this is the point in the review where we'd explain the next step of rules, the next thing to consider. But no, honestly, we've taught you the whole game. It really is simple as draw cards, play cards to move cubes, and move cubes to draw cards to play cards to move cubes. Um, and yet, while it's simple to teach, it's not that simple to play because a lot of the time you're considering whether to play a card now and change the cubes versus keeping the cubes and then drawing more cards to see if you get a better opportunity. You're wondering uh, whether to focus on space stuff and titanium or whether you should be a space guy with titanium who also has some fish on the side because if you focus too much on one area and you draw cards, then a lot of them you can't use. And while this central board won't be holding much of your attention, you'll still see spaces on it that you want to fill. And that means wondering whether you have to fill them now or you can just fill them next turn because they'll still be available. That's an interesting decision, almost. But I've got to say that whilst the central board does attract your attention, it's usually in economics because I, when we played, I kept forgetting, and other players kept forgetting to actually move these oxygen markers and the temperature markers. We just got the victory point and got the money, and then we're like, yeah, I got more things, and everyone's like, yeah, we're terraforming Mars, and we're like, oh yeah, yeah we are. I forgot, I keep forgetting we're doing that. I just thought that's worth mentioning, I'll go now. Uh, so, all that said, it doesn't necessarily matter because a side effect of all these economies spinning up as easily as children with fidget spinners is that you constantly have more money. You constantly have new cards. You constantly have lots of little decisions to think about, even if they're not that interesting. So there we have it. A satisfying game that offers up a lot of richness of storytelling, a lot of strategic options, a lot of different angles to pursue. So many cards to see, so all of many them. Cards you see. can build them and feel satisfied with yourself. Get a cube and move it on a... Um, so you're going to give it the um, the uh, oh, recommendation badge? I was. I thought you were going to give it the recommendation oh, badge. Yeah, I've kind of got a few more things I want to say about it. I I actually have a few more things I was going to say. Should we do some more reviews? Let's just do a bit more review. So I had a great time with terraforming Mars, and in fact, everyone who I played it with did. But what became increasingly apparent, especially on multiple playthroughs, is that I didn't feel like I was truly trying to crack a puzzle so much as I was being expertly distracted. You see so much of this game when you actually look at what you're doing is cross-referencing all the numbers and details on cards with the resources on your sheet, with the map of the board, with the cards you've got, putting the cards in order that you're going to play them, working out which card is flat out better than another given your circumstance. It's so much calculation. And you see, when I play engine building games, what I'm looking for is something like a crossword puzzle where I can sit back and ponder and feel clever and consider how clever the creator is. Whereas what Terraforming Mars felt like to me and I don't mean this in a terrible way, is Sudoku, where I'm pretty much just doing an awful lot of arithmetic. And I'll tell you what, there were some turns in Terraforming Mars that even felt completely solvable, especially towards the end of a game. You draw four cards and you go, well, those two are useless. This one, I've got a better thing here. So this is the only one worth buying. And then I'm going to combine that with this other card. That's the best possible turn. And that's the opposite of what I want from a Euro game. Now, 
Paul Dean, reviewer of this parish, isn't here today, and unlike Matt and myself, he didn't like terraforming Mars at all. And I think I know exactly why. You see, Paul loves management games, he plays and reviews them probably the most out of anyone on Shut Up and Sit Down, and he loves them for letting him explore multiple layers of this incredibly ornate problem where you learn to look at this game from an all new angle and then realise that brings all new human difficulties and you might share these observations with your friends. I am going to get up my ass for a moment and call this the sublime of Eurogame design, where Eurogames are really mysterious and unknowable. All of that stuff Matt and myself felt was largely absent from terraforming Mars, and that's okay because it was replaced with something that some people are going to find even better, which is calculating efficiency. But that's a little less exciting to Matt and myself, and it's certainly less exciting to Paul, who doesn't like calculating or efficiency. In fact, I don't even think calculating efficiency is on the party scale. These faults spring to life when you play the game with only two people. Early game, you've got all this wonderful colour and tone of the cards you're placing, little stories, but my mid-game, end game, that's just gone. You've put on so many things that it's just stuff, you know? You're not growing forests and going into space, you're tapping that, which gives you that, and then you get four of these from that, and then this turns two of them into eight of them. And you know that bit in the Matrix where Neo goes vumph and the whole world is just numbers and code? It's like that, but you can't turn it off. And it's just numbers, and Mars is gone. Hello Matthew, uh, we're coming to the viewers live from near the end of our two player game. Uh, Mars is basically terraformed. I've just got one question to ask you, does the game make sense anymore? No. No, no, let's look at how many cards I've got. That seems like, yeah, that seems, yeah. So it's very weak with two players, too slow with five, and then it plays pretty well with three or four, but then you look at other Euro games we've covered on the website recently, things like A Feast for Odin or Great Western Trail, and these are games that play better with a broader number of people. And whilst it does a lot of things, it doesn't really do anything interesting and new. My favourite thing in the game, though, by a long way, my favourite thing is this award system, which has players visibly buying certain reward criteria for the end of the game. There can only be three and they get increasingly expensive. Forcing players to commit like this early on, or, or late, and go, look, I'm gonna get the most money, or I'm gonna develop the most heat or the most science. Getting people to actually put it down in front of everyone visibly is amazing and it creates a gamble mechanic of the fact that do you go early and ensure that you can do it but then can you pull it off? Will another player see you do that and go no actually I'm going to get more money than you. It's a fantastic mechanic. We also have to add that the components are very shonky for how expensive this game is, especially here in Europe. The public domain art that they've used to illustrate these cards sometimes is hilarious, sometimes it's nice, sometimes it looks like pieces of art from two completely different games. And these player mats, if someone happens to nudge one of them, that's game over. It's impossible to remember where you were and reset them, so you better have some friends who are pretty great with their hands or who are very easy going about you just randomly deciding how much titanium you are making. Okay, now I feel better. It's good. It's good. It is good. Can I talk about Race for the Galaxy for a bit? Yes. Okay, so if you like card powered games that tell stories with a lot of tricky decisions, Race for the Galaxy is half the price. No, it's not got the, all the cubes and it's not a big engine building game, but I would rather play Race than this and it's cheaper. And as far as other Euro games go, I don't even know if this is in my top 20. It's good. It's good. It is good. But it's not in my top 20. And who needs more than 20 Euro games? Who needs more than 20 Euro games? I certainly don't. I haven't got room for them. No. Yeah. Although I will have room for 20 Euro games uh, when I finish building my house. Because I'm currently building a house on Mars. Are you? No, just wait a minute. There'll be a. When you say something like this, it does. A, it goes to like a green screen bit, and it's like it's really funny. There'll be like a, a joke to do with me making it. Just wait. You want to do a joke? And uh... no, no, no. You say something like this, and then it cuts to a bit where it's like I'm on Mars and I'm building a house, and something's gone wrong. It's, it's a funny. It, it'll end the video. It'll be really funny. It should any minute. On Mars. I have to go. I mean, like, I've got dinner plans and stuff. Hey, it's gonna be just a minute. No, man, like, I I wish you well, um, but yeah, I'll, uh, All right. I'll see you later.
Everything's okay, yeah? Yeah, no, it's fine. Okay. Any minute. But... Take care. Quins! Yeah. Oh, you missed it. You missed it. I was on... I was on Mars. But... It wasn't funny, nothing happened. <laughs> Okay. <laughs>